everyone and welcome to a very special episode of Scenes Legal for Sporting News Australia. Today I'm very excited about this show uh, because we're going to be discussing the new laws and uh, the way the laws are being updated and changed uh, in the game throughout the world. So really excited to have Fraser Stewart as ever, the guardian of the laws from the MCC, join us to explain all of these uh, changes that are coming in and, and how they're going to apply in the game. Now, these are going to come in from October of 2022. So we've got a little bit of time to get our heads around them, get used to them. But uh, thank you, Fraser, for joining us for this. You must be very excited. Yes, it is. It's always exciting when uh, when some, some new laws come in. Um, and I guess it's our job to try to educate people on them and to try and make them as, as simple and, and as understandable as possible. So uh, hopefully I can help to do that. The first law that we'll look at, well, why not start with number one, law number one, Fraser, that has to do with replacement players. Can you tell us what's going to be changing with this law? Yes, it's a, a, a change that we're making. Probably won't come into play that often, but uh, we've looked at, I think, um, replacements are are more common now just to be clear a replacement is different from a substitute a substitute fielder can just come on and field a replacement is someone who can come on and take a full part in the game um, and we're seeing them more now with with covid um, replacements and with concussion um, replacements so what we've done is we've just um, tweaked it so that uh, a, a replacement who comes on will sort of take on um, any warnings or, or sanctions um, of the player that they were replacing. So to put that in, in common language, imagine Jimmy Anderson, for example, had been warned twice for, for running on the pitch in the danger area and then had to be replaced for, for whatever reason and was replaced by um, another bowler. That bowler would inherit those warnings that um, that were against Anderson. And I guess the, the, the reason of this is the point of replacement is to mitigate the disadvantage of, of losing a player, but should not produce any extra advantage. Um, and so, yeah, the, the new, any new player coming on will uh, have to... Um, inherit anything of the of the, any sort of bad points or anything that the of the player that they're replacing the innocent players are, are now going to be guilty as as the previous player was as charged so i'm okay with that one that one looks all right to me so fraser let's talk about law 18 batters returning when caught this to me is one of the most interesting changes that uh, you're making, poss possibly because it's the one that we're going to see all the time. Yes, this this will be a common one. And it was actually trialed during uh, the 100 um, in, in England last summer as a, as a playing regulation and was very popular with, um, with the players and, and coaches. What we're saying is the old law, which was the new striker will go to where the batter was when the ball was caught. That's going and the new batter will be go to the striker's end. It matters not now whether the batter's crossed in the air before the catch was taken, you know, normally out in the deep somewhere. The new batter will come in and will be on strike for the next delivery, unless of course it was the, the last ball of an over, um, in which case he or she will go to the to the to the new non-striker's end. But what we what we've done is um the batters would quite often, particularly towards an end of an innings, um, manipulate what happens to make sure that they did cross or they didn't cross so that the the other batter who may be um, set um, was on strike for the next delivery. Um, and we feel that the taking of a wicket, um, as in most other cases, whether it's bowled or caught behind or, or LBW, um, the, the new batter is on strike for the, for the next ball. And we just feel it's, um, it's a way of um, giving, giving the bowler an extra reward of, of getting a wicket that they will, unless it's the last ball of the over, they will always uh, get to bowl to the new batter um, of the next ball. I think there are going to be bowlers all around the world at every level of the game who that will be music to their ears for, I think, hearing that. They're going to enjoy that. All right, let us talk about Law 20. Now, let me see if I get this right. Law 20.4.2.12. It rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Um, but it's all about a dead ball. So can you explain to us in what scenario uh, the, the dead ball law, law is changing? Yeah, so all, all we're doing there is really um, trying to cater for a time when a, a, a person or an, or an animal or, or an object um, comes onto the field and interferes with, with play. 
Um, and um, this actually happened again during the, the 100 last year when a member of the Spectator came on and sort of interfered with Ben Stokes, who was fielding down at the boundary. And probably actually in, in that instance, probably didn't affect play that significantly. It was the, the batters were just taking a single. But it, it raised some questions with us. And what we felt is that if a person, an object or, or an animal comes on, and directly in, interferes with play, and, and this is one where the umpires have got to make a decision on on whether you know the the outcome of the delivery has been altered by this um, person or, or animal coming on. Then they will call dead ball, and the ball wouldn't count in the over, and and it's re re bowled. So if someone uh, or a dog or something of that nature ran in on the other side of the field to where the ball was being hit, then there wouldn't be any cause. Um, for it to, to be called a dead ball in that situation. That's correct, yes. Okay, I've got my head around that one. I can cope with that one. So this is good. I'm understanding them all so far, Fraser. Right, let us um, move on to law 21.4. Now, this is a fascinating one because it's one that I didn't even consider would be a possibility uh, within the game, this kind of scenario. It's about the bowler throwing towards the striker's end before the delivery is bowled. So uh, ex explain to us, because I don't think I've seen this ever happening in cricket. So I didn't know it was, it was actually even allowed. Yes, it's something that, uh, that I think many people don't know happen, uh, is, is sort of able to happen. And that's probably a good thing. It's, it's not something um, that really is the, the way we want cricket to be played. But yet, um, until October 2022, the bowler is permitted if he or she sees the, the striker coming down the, the pit, possibly trying to, to steal a run. The, the bowler is entitled to throw the ball down um, at the striker's end to try to run out uh, the um, the striker if he um, he or she throws the ball before entering the delivery stride. We can't find any videos of it happening. It, it It's very, very rare. So um, all we've done is just called it a dead ball because we felt that it could actually cause um, more controversy with, uh, 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 say, a bowler do, does actually try to throw it um, down to the striker's end. The striker wasn't sure whether it was a bowl or, or a throw. And um, and hits the ball. You know, should he or she get runs for that? Um, should it be a, a no ball? Um, could it be out obstructing the field if it was an attempted run out, which which the batter then hits? So it creates a lot of um, controversy. Um, if if it did ever happen, we think it's easier just to just to say, look, um, you can't get a run out of the of the striker down at that end. We don't think it, it's hardly ever happens, if at all. Um, and now it certainly won't happen. So. It's, it's not much of a change, but a big change, if that makes sense. We see you say that, Fraser, but now I'm just imagining everyone out there has got until October of this year to try it. So if, you go, if you're going to try it out there, no, I wouldn't want to encourage it at all. But if you do, make sure you send me the video so that I can see what it looks like. Um, but that's a really, really interesting one. And I want to be inside the head of whoever actually thought through that scenario to make the change to the laws because that is some deep thinking on cricket scenarios for sure. Okay, another law that is changing in October 2022, really interesting, and one that we probably will see a, a bit more of as well, is Law 22.1, which covers judging a wide. Now, what is changing here? Yeah, so what we've done here is to try to um, make things a bit fairer for, for the bowlers. Um, in Particularly in, in recent years, and, and particularly in white ball cricket, we've seen uh, batters moving laterally in the crease, sort of over to the offside or, or to leg side. Um, and the, the old law, just to, um, to clarify um, for the wide, to judge a wide, was either where the batter would normally be stood in, in a conventional stance, so in front of the stumps, or if they've moved towards the ball where they, where they currently are. What it didn't take to, into account is where they may have been previously. And so what, what we've done is a slight tweak in the law so that um, it will be a wide based on where the, the, the still where the batter would conventionally be, sort of in, in a normal stance position, um, where they've moved to if they are still there when the ball passes them, but um, also where they have been um, since the ball came into play, which is when the, the bowler started the run up. And um, we found several good examples. So, so one of which was as the bowler was in the gather, so just sort of uh, around where the umpire might normally be stood, the batter from a, from a traditional stance went to stand well outside leg stump, sort of a couple of feet outside leg stump. But then as the bowler is just getting to the release point, 
the batter has now come back to pretty much in front of the stumps, moving across to the offside. And by the time that the ball um, is down, reaching the, the striker, it was well outside the off stump. The ball goes down just outside the leg stump. Is it fair that that's a Y? And we feel that it's not. You know, as the bowler was in his gather, that's where the batter had been standing. And so it's fair enough that um, if he then bowls it there, the batter can't make it a wide by moving across to another side. So now the the law will be it's um, where a, a batter would conventionally stand, um, so on either side of that, um, where he or she has moved to, but also where he or she has been um, since uh, since the bowler started their run up. And we just feel that um, with so much lateral movement going on, it's quite unfair for the bowlers um, if um, the batter sort of is in one place and then and then somewhere else. So. Um, it just gives the bowlers a little bit more leeway, which we think is, is fair. It's probably reasonably fair to even things up a, a little bit well in this T20 world where you often see batters moving all around the crease uh, in in order to try and put bowlers uh, off sometimes of their lines and lengths as well. So that's a, a really interesting one. I look forward to seeing how that one plays out, really. Now, Law 25.8 is actually one that we, we've sort of foreshadowed this in a previous uh, episode of Seams League. When we talked about uh, David Warner in the World Cup, where he played a, a, a ball that was still on the pitch, but the ball had bounced twice. And you foreshadowed at the time that there might be some kind of tweak to the laws surrounding that kind of thing. So what's actually changed now with this law? Yes, so the new law with this will, will be that um, if the, the ball is um, is so wide um, that um, in order to play it, the batter has to leave the pitch. And just to be clear, the pitch is the cut strip 10 feet wide, so five, five feet either side of, of the middle stumps. So if the ball is so wide that the batter has to leave the pitch to, to play the ball, then it will be a, a no ball and a dead ball. Yeah, we don't want that the batter sort of running out um, to, to somewhere, you know, well off the pitch to try and smash a, a rolling ball to the boundary there could be fielders close to them who may be going to try and pick it up so there is a, a slight safety element but more importantly it's not really the, the look of, of the game and um, obviously it will be a dead ball and, and a no ball so uh, the you know in, in many things that that will follow um, with a free hit uh, under playing regulations not un, not under law but if the ball does bounce twice and remains on the pitch then it's still uh, go for your life to the batter yeah a, a double bounce is a is a no ball but uh but it remains in play as long as it's within the pitch. Excellent. So that won't change, wouldn't have changed what happened in the World Cup. So there's two laws uh, in this in this new change that we have uh, that we're now going to talk about. Laws 27.4 and 28.6, unfair movement by the fielding side. And this is an interesting one as well. Not one that we see very often, but can you can you explain to us what is unfair fielding and, and what's going to happen if it occurs now? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's unfair movement by the fielding side. And the reason it's in two laws is that uh, one relates to the movement by the wicketkeeper and one by um, by fielders, which is, um, you know, the, the other fielders. And uh, this law has always been there in that uh, the batter can be reasonably entitled to know where the where the fielders are um, at the at the time that the the bowlers uh, in his or her run up, uh, and so and the laws have always pre prevented uh, fielders from say you know running backwards or, or running sideways a long way. Walking in is is allowed and, and accepted, but significant alteration um, either going backwards or sideways is is not allowed. So if it happened, it was a dead ball. But often the dead ball couldn't would not have been called until the ball had been released and the and the striker had had a chance to play at it and obviously what could happen is the the batter could hit the ball for four or even six or runs or whatever and then be denied those runs when it was seen that the fielding side had done something wrong and therefore it was a dead ball and, and the ball didn't count in the over. So what we've done is we have uh, made this a five penalty run offence um, because the, the fielding side shouldn't be doing it. So it will be five penalty runs to the batting side. The ball will still not count in the over. If the batter had hit it for six, then he or she will be perhaps um, denied, denied one run. But I think that's quite a a rare um, event of both those two things happening on the same ball. Um, but generally, it means that uh, that the, the fielding side have done something wrong, they will be punished with five penalty runs and, and the ball won't count in the over. Again, this is another one where I, I just 
bow in in admiration at the way that you guys can think of every single scenario that can possibly occur in cricket but uh, that's a, that's another one so interesting one uh, when it comes to unfair movement as we talk about uh, certain changes to the laws something's happened that's not actually a change in the law uh, but it's a moving of where the law appears, uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, and this is law 38.3, uh, the running out of the non-striker. So, and that's what we're calling it. I know people know it by another term, but that's not the official term that we like to use. Uh, so this is, this is obviously always a controversial one when it does happen in international cricket. Um, why, I don't know what, because it is in the laws. But what do you hope to achieve by, by moving it? Where are you moving it from to and, and what's the purpose of that? Yes, yeah, so, so this law has um, for, um, for a long time existed in, in Law 41, which is uh, unfair play. And in, in it, it uh, allows the fielding or the bowler to, to run out the non-striker if he or she is, is out of her ground before the anticipated expected moment of release. But it's the only dismissal that isn't in the sort of dismissal section. We have all the, um, all the dismissals that, that go through uh, nicely in alphabetical order from, from bold through to, to timed out. And this is effectively a run out. And it's said in, in Law 40, one that the non-striker would be out run out and yet it's in a, a, a law on unfair play so what we've done is is moved it to its perhaps more logical home it's now part of the run out law um, it's exactly the same um, principles apply so we haven't changed the law or the timing or anything like that as to when um, you know this this um, this type of run out can occur um, but what we've done is just put it in its um, in its more logical place of, of a run out yes that there is controversy around it in an ideal world, we wouldn't like, um, you know, we, we don't like seeing these forms of dismissals. And the easiest way of that not happening is for the non-strikers to stay on their ground just that little bit longer um, until they're sure that the, the bowler has, has released the ball and then they can go and, and back up and, and try and get a get a quick single if they want to. All I can say is amen. I highly approve of this, Fraser. It's exactly where it should be. And yes, the message is stay in your crease, basically. So the final law that we're going to look at in these new changes, very interesting, Law 41.3. Uh, we got rid of saliva temporarily, or, or at least while COVID was on, but it's no saliva from now until whenever. Correct, yes. Um, the, the Law 41.3 is is changing the condition of the ball uh, unfairly. And um as, as you as you rightly say, um, with COVID coming in, playing regulations have been written pretty much at every level of the game um, to outlaw the the use of saliva um, as a means to to polish the ball. And we've been following this quite closely to see what effect, um, if any, it has had on the game. And the research um, so far that we've had is is that it's made very little effect. You know, there's long been arguments in and around cricket pavilions over the best ways of getting a ball, some shine on the ball and getting the ball to swing. And what we've done is we've outlawed the, the use of saliva on the ball. It's a pretty unhygienic practice if you if you think about it. There's not many workplaces where someone would spit on something before passing it to you. So what we've done is we've, we've taken um, it out and um, I'm just um, so basically now the fielding side will just have to rely on um, on sweat if they want to apply um, anything to the ball uh, and, and and not saliva. And, and I think what this also does, which um, probably you know had an influence on it, is it also cuts out some quite grey areas that, that were there in the laws. We've seen fielders having whether it's chewing gum or certain types of mints or sweets um, that make their that made their saliva sort of sugary which they would then claim may may or may not make the ball um, shine up better and, and make it swing more this cuts out all that uh, kind of controversy as well it's amazing because it's not until you put it like that that it really does come come home and who knows this may mean that we have seen the end of any mint gate type uh, controversy to hit the game. Uh, Fraser, thank you so much for taking us through those. That's really, really interesting. And I really appreciate you taking the time to actually explain them as clearly as you always do so that, that people can understand uh, how these rules are going to work and how they're going to apply for them. Please remember the, the MCC does have fantastic e-learning uh, e resources available 
online. So if you're able to get online, if you want to find out more, we've got a whole series of these videos, of course, that you can check up on. Uh, but do share them around your friends and your, your social cricket groups uh, and let us know what you think of these new laws. Go check them out online if you need to. And we will be back very soon with another episode of Seems Legal. Thank you.